Good morning. Well, it's morning right now, almost afternoon where I am. Who knows what time it may be when you view this video. Um, I'm going to ramble a little bit. I am driving. I don't know what the audio quality will be like. We'll find out later and you can feel free to give me some feedback on that. Um, my Bible app brought up James chapter 1 verses 22, 23, and 24. And we're going to stick with just 22 and 23. Actually, you know what? No, let's go to verse all the way to verse 25. So I'm going to read the verses and expound as I um, travel to take my son to get some football gear. We just spent this morning putting his contacts in. Uh, I guess I need to do another um, lesson on vision. So much to unpack there. But for now, I digress. Verse 22, James chapter one, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he behold, beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Father Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, by way of the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, thank you for another day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on it. Thank you for the internet to be able to spread the message. Infinite thanks. Amen. Now, I do suppose as a parent, it strikes home for me in the most serious and the most potent manner when it comes to fatherhood when I read this verse. Um... You know, I don't claim to be anybody's pastor. Hold on one moment. So if you need to blow your nose, blow your nose. Oh, okay. See, that's my son right there. So that's my priority. However, uh, if you know me in my personal life, then you know I, I, I work with youth and children in a capacity in which I can um, present information to them, sometimes even affect how they look at life, so forth and so on. So with that being said, there's, uh, I'm pretty sure, however you grew up, you saw your parents being, either being or seemingly being some form of a hypocrite. For example, uh, my father cursed a lot. Okay. And he told me not to curse. And for the sake of the gospel, of course, I'm not going to have that type of speech pattern here. But the reality of the situation is, look, I'm not claiming to be anybody's angel, anybody's pastor. I'm not claiming to be perfect. I'm discussing the word. He who be without sin cast the first stone. I ain't got no stones to cast whatsoever. But I will say this. I believe this is the hardest part of the gospel because when you experience salvation, your behavior patterns and thought patterns do change as a byproduct. But just like King Yeshua, after his resurrection, he still had his scars in his hands from the nails in the cross, signifying that he's been here. He's seen what you've seen. He's been a human being. And that also lets us know because you can't go above your master. Therefore, whatever you experience and go through in life, remnants of it remain. So what do you do about it? I have my moments when I'm imperfect, probably more imperfect moments than perfect moments. Not a probably, definitely. However, the Holy Spirit does convict me. And at one point or another, it's brought to my remembrance that, hey, man, you are supposed to be living and operating 
by a higher or better standard. Okay. Still doesn't erase humanity. But you'll find yourself in moments where you say the right thing. You guide people to the right thing. But whether you like it or not, as uncomfortable as it may be, your example does get watched. And even knowing that your example is being observed, it still doesn't make you perfect. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Now, I know two gentlemen who are uh, I'm proud to be uh, associated with. If there's anybody who comes close to a quote unquote perfect walk, it's them. And even they have their moments. One of them doesn't talk about his faults as much. One does. And that's OK, because, uh, you know, both of these guys, I consider uh, I consider uh, spiritual guides. Maybe if you talk about the prayer world, even spiritual hitmen, because if there's somebody I know who can get a prayer answer, because if you recall in that passage of scripture, I just read. Your deeds are blessed when you can be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. And here's the awesome thing about the word of Yahweh. Everything from financial strategy, work ethic, military strategy, how to maintain a relationship, how to raise your kids, even how you position your house when you build it. You can find knowledge of all things as a basis for progression in life in the word of Yahweh. I do suppose that means you actually have to read it cover to cover. You actually have to do some studying, but then you have to actually follow what you see. Easier said than done, especially in modern day society. I was just looking at a study on the internet of from a gentleman with the last name Calhoun, a scientist. It was called a rat the rat utopia experiment experiment basically what ended up happening was this man took a mouse colony and they were basically given everything that they could need food shelter they didn't have to work for anything and guess what the man repeated the experiment 25 times and every time all of the mice went extinct so in this modern day age where you have everything at your fingertips, fast food, um, they build these houses and, and condominiums and housing development neighborhoods out of nothing within days. Uh, you can get on the internet and see whatever you want to, whether wholesome or not. Dealing with people, look, hey, in, in, in 2022, man, look, People are darn near for sale. Whatever you want, if you got the money, somebody will sell it to you. And I'm not going to go into detail with that, but if you're an adult, you know what I mean. And it's very sad that humanity is that comfortable with that. But in this microwave society, even though it feels easy to get anything that you want and do anything that you want, that's deadly. And you could say, okay, well, those are mice. We're people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the deal. We're, we have primal instincts. We're still mammals. We still need food. We still need shelter. And we still crave pleasure. But if you are willing to take yourself and discipline yourself and curtail your bad ways. And, and when I say bad or, or, or whatever type of behavior that is not positive. If you're willing to line it up with the word get in line Yahweh blesses your ways and your path if you ask him to order your steps in righteousness he'll do so now when you get your steps ordered in righteousness it ain't always easy it don't always feel good but you know what when you're lifting weights and building up strength it doesn't feel good until you you know you learn to appreciate it over time but it's stress on the body but you're building it up if you have to stay up late and study because you're a scholar, well, you know, it feels good to close your eyes and sleep and relax. But the result that you get from that studying helps your progression in life to become greater than what it is. Whereas sleeping, you become stagnant. And if you sleep long enough and you become uh, lazy enough, then what ends up happening is um, the Bible tells you that 
slothfulness leads to poverty. Being lazy basically leads to you being broke and not having choices in life. So it is better in the long run to take the uncomfortable route of disciplining yourself because that's really what this is about discipline doing the same thing over and over and over again because it's the right thing and it's the best thing whether it feels good looks good or not that's what it boils down to you have to answer for every action if my son had, has any bad habits at one point or another, I have to hold myself accountable. That's what men do. That's a big debate on the internet, internet right now as far as families and relationships are concerned, holding oneself accountable. But you have to do it. Am I perfect? No. Is my son going to be perfect? No. Is my daughter going to be perfect? No. But it's my job as a parent to push them as far as they can go so they can be all that they can be in this world. And that starts with me as a parent by being a hearer of the word, reading the word, studying the word, and being a doer of the word. Like the saying goes, it's easier said than done, but blessed is he that is a doer of the word. I pray that you have a wonderful day and I pray that I shared some information with you that is valuable. Shalom.